Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, my talk. What I'm going to summarize uh, today is our uh, data information, what we're doing. Uh, we have captured in the last few months on the structural wheel analysis by optical genome mapping in, in severe COVID-19 patients. Uh, again, I'm Ravindra Kohli. I'm a pathologist at Medical College of Georgia, uh, Augusta at Augusta University. And this is a collective work uh, through our COVID-19 whole genome consortium and their members. These are my relevant disclosures uh, associated with the content of the talk. Uh, most importantly, uh, uh, the, uh, the slides, the opinion expressed here are my personal opinions and they do not represent the opinions of my collaborators or the employer. And the SAFIRE instrument, which I'm gonna mention in this uh, talk, is intended for molecular biology applications and not intended for diagnosis, prevention, or treatment of the disease. So some background on why we are doing this, uh, as you guys must have seen through the presentations, uh, not only for today, for the, for the entire week, that the structural variants, including the CMVs, accounts for a significant portion of variation among individuals. And these uh, variations, uh, do play a significant role in host immune response. And this is very well documented, especially the, the large SVs. When we started looking at uh, structural variants and the available data for COVID-19 predisposition, <clears throat> we felt that uh, the, the existing consortium uh, were mostly focused on sequencing and uh, which ideally would miss some of these larger structural variants. And to investigate these host genomes, especially uh, in the individuals who are severely ill at very large structural variants, we put together this consortium of uh, groups and labs and started discussing what are the platforms, what's the ideal way, what should be the population uh, in which we should be looking at. With one of the most important goal is why do some people get sick and some people end up being ICU and, and dead with the viral infection? Is there something in our host genome, especially at the large structural variant, we can identify? So that this is our overall uh, goal for this study. The way we designed this was, um, yeah, at this current moment, we have 37 individuals who uh, were infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus and had the COVID-19 disease. Uh, they were admitted to ICU and the control group we have is it's two. One is the bio control group, as well as we have individuals who are infected by the SARS-CoV-2 in, in virus, but they're absolutely uh, asymptomatic. So those are the control groups we're using in the study. Um, in, in this demographic, uh, I mean, the inclusion criteria was anyone who is confirmed with a SARS-CoV-2 PCR test, and, and would require for a mechanical ventilation or at least a fractional uh, inspired oxygen at of 60% or more. Uh, the individuals we were able to include in the study ranged uh, from 19, uh, the age range was 19 to 83, a uh, good mix of male to female, dominated by African American, uh, African -American individuals uh, because of the population around uh, our state. And uh, we do have a, a, a decent mix of chronic pre-existing condition in these uh, individuals, mostly uh, diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, and asthma. Uh, the platform which we use uh, for my uh, presentation is by an SFI system, and the Dino assembly pipeline which was used was the Human Genome 19 reference gene. Uh, I'll jump onto the results. Uh, we identified uh, unique uh, 11 structural variants among 38 genes, out of which seven were rare and unique, and four were common uh, structural variants. Uh, most, if not all, the information is extensively discussed in this non peer reviewed preprint uh, on MedRx. Um, if, you, if you feel, uh, please go ahead and uh, look into and uh, let us know what you guys think about the data. So this is the structural variant number one, uh, which includes deletion in the exon three and four of the gene DPP4. Um, 
here we, we show that uh, the, 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 this particular deletion in exome three and four, and as you know, DPD four is an immune gene which is implicated in uh, diabetes and the response to diabetic drugs. And we're able to show uh, the dosage uh, of this deletion with expression uh, using controls, uh, control DNA. The second sexual variant is on the X chromosomal, uh, which is basically a duplication involving the STK24. And here uh, on the chromosome, <clears throat> X, we can see the duplication. Uh, and again, the STK24 is associated with innate immunity and inflammatory response. And this is the other dosage studies which shows uh, the, the expression to show the, the duplication and increased expression. Uh, and continuing on STK24, when we looked at all the individuals, especially the uh, 11 asymptomatic and 12 severely uh, ill individuals with normalized uh, RNA, you can clearly see uh, there is a significant uh, fold change in individuals who are infected with SARS-CoV-2 and absolutely no symptoms versus individuals who are infected with SARS-CoV-2 uh, end up with a COVID-19 disease as well as uh, had to have um, assisted uh, oxygenation or um, ventilation. And uh, as you can see, the, one of the cases which we have a highest STK uh, expression uh, had a uh, partial duplication of STK to 4G. So this basically proves uh, what we were seeing on the optical genome mapping on Sapphire pretty much has a functional uh, functional uh, approval in, in terms of expression of these. The sexual variant number three uh, was involving the deletion of the ZADHHC1 gene. It is a 146 KB heterozygous deletion in chromosome 16 that contains up uh, six genes, which includes the PKL HG4, KCD19, LRRC36, TPP3, U1, and the ZDHHC1 gene. And we were also able to show the, the dosage experiments uh, with the control to show the deletion has uh, the fun functionality or the functional studies of that deletion uh, are there. So these are the three uh, unique uh, and the private events which we saw, I think were clinically important. We are studying them extensively in the different ways. Uh, so to conclude, uh, the optical genome mapping definitely identified uh, structural variants in three different categories. Uh, one is the innate immunity and inflammatory response, and it has a group of genes which are very well studied, uh, not only in uh, SARS-CoV-2, but also uh, the SARS-CoV-2-1 and another viral infection and their inflammatory response. Uh, the second group which we identified the structural variants was the airway resistance of pathogens, especially the mucus secretion, and the MUC4 gene had a um, very well documented structural variant in that particular uh, gene. And the third group, which we have uh, pretty significant structural variants, was viral lubrication spread and RNA editing. And I think this group, uh, we are exploring it further to see what are the implications of this group uh, in post infection, not just making it asymptomatic. So our overreaching goal for uh, the consortium as well as my lab is to uh, recruit uh, a thousand uh, individuals uh, with a significant number of asymptomatic individuals as a control, continue functional studies for DPP4 and SDK26, we saw these were the uh, early insights or first insights uh, in these structural variants in COVID-19 individuals. Uh, we're also uh, working with uh, our collaborators in the consortium to do a targeting sequencing for TLR7 gene and the downstream pathway. Uh, we, are uh, we are also investigating these structural variants and uh, where do they are in the GWAS studies or the existing data as well as some uh, emerging data on the sequencing. We're also doing some parallel whole genome analysis on our subcohort uh, and then, and then 
uh, we do also plan to do a comparative genomics uh, with uh, other vertebrates with, with, um, with the collaborators in our uh, consortium. So this is our uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, diagram, which shows a key viral host interaction path with highlighting genes that we found uh, have structural variants in COVID-19 in our patients. I know this is uh, early data, uh, but if you look at the upregulated and downregulated and the, the balance between them uh, and the structural variants identified. So this is, this is uh, our proposal, which is still a work in progress. Again, this is a part of that uh, presentation. This is part of the paper, uh, which can be um, uh, looked at it more uh, in details. Uh, Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a very collective global effort uh, to put and collect this knowledge base for all of us through the COVID-19 uh, post-genome structural variant consortium. Uh, we have a, a variety of uh, individuals with expertise in different areas, which are helping us put this together. And I would like to help uh, Dr. Sej Paul and Dr. Mondal in my lab and uh, from Bionanogenomics, uh, Dr. Clifford, Dr. Pang, Dr. Hasty, Dr. Chobe, Jeff Robinson, and William Banu to help us put these, uh, not only the consortium, but the data and everything together. Thank you. <laughs>